the podcast. Can you start again? I'm sorry. No, welcome back to Beverly Hills 9011, the podcast. Last time, we saw drama and comedy unfold as our talented actors began crafting their character and script. Now get ready for another exciting episode as we introduce Cinnamon Becca McLemore. Good morning, Beverly Hills. Robert Man- Manel. Correct. Hello. And the legendary Eric Estrada. Hi. Yeah, good morning. Join us as we witness their creative process and the magic of Beverly Hill 90211 experience. Let's do it. Right. Good morning. <laughs> I hope everyone out there is staying as dry as my skin this morning. I sure as <laughs> Nice. Starting off the podcast with a with a joke, which is topical. I like it. Yeah. So let's do a little insight into our characters. Um, I am going to be playing Canalita. She is a psychic who comes from a long line of gypsies from Ireland. I can certainly relate, um, as I come from a long line of gypsies from Ireland. And when they landed in North Carolina, they became preachers, which is absolutely the same thing as a gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so uh, basically, I'm kind of going to pull from that. I'm going to, um, um, you know, really entertain with um, her, the interaction that she has with the main character, which I think is the star of our show, which is going to be a very uh, magical robot. And um, I'm excited about it. So, so what do you what do you think, Eric and, and Robert, about what's going on with your character? Kind of um, how you. Um, I'm just gonna be brutally honest. I, uh, I don't feel comfortable delving into who my character is until I know this story exactly. I, I think that's, that's okay. Yeah. That's that's the the um, the order of operation. You know, is right. the story. Yeah. So hopefully and with you guys today we can we can just talk about the story and figure out you know like you know just add more of the necessary details and you know get it all nice and snug where everyone is comfortable with and, you know going forward with it. And that may be kind of cool to kind of tie some of that into your character like yeah, uh, this, yeah. the character is yes. very orderly yeah i don't even want to talk about my character until i have a, a yeah. confident idea of where he fits into the story so yeah that's what hopefully we talk about uh, you know i can agree with that as personally i i could say and ramble on character but if it has i it had if it has no addition to the story or if it adds too much yeah. to the story or if it ends up falling apart because it doesn't support the story then, yeah. then what's the point of us talking about a character? exactly yeah. yeah so you guys are kind of going to like dive deep into um into what's going on with the script and what's going on with yeah so yeah i'll just i mean like i'll just look at this i'll keep this in my hand and i'll be just like and he he has this recorded so i don't no need to write anything down um but i'll just like yeah like just ask questions and like maybe we could get this outline to like a more concrete place you know like a- so my character, of course, being a psychic, being a gypsy, um, she's kind of a con artist, but she kind of believes in her magic um, parallel, but she's kind of, you know, you know, manipulating people with it. I am, in my own life, kind of a uh, fly-by-the-seat-of-her-pants type of girl if an opportunity is presented. I'm, you know, I may, I, I'm not close to it. I'm kind of an open person. Do you feel like, um, like, in your personal lives, like, that you need to, like, order is it extremely important like uh script flow order um, talk about that so well um yeah definitely definitely just more recently but um the order of things definitely i, I find is very important but i'm basically saying this because i've tried to write a script for like like mm-hmm. a few times and like uh and i realized that i couldn't go anywhere until i had this story figured out in terms of what happens in the beginning what happens in the middle and most importantly how does it end and like and so like once like you know like because you know i started at the wrong point sometimes i would start with a character i would start with like something i want to see like a final whatever and then like you know i try to go from spread out from there but um, it didn't really work so I, I figured out that the uh the best way is to figure out the story I beforehand can, i can agree with you on that i too have that. Yeah. Yeah, i didn't think nothing like, writing for me is brand new. i didn't know where i thought i write this episode like i planned this and i script out the first that just all fall apart the more i want something in there mm-hmm. and then it throws your scripts right, out, right. Of, out of there and i have 
have to restart or you have to try to wiggle it in there all the best. Figure out the main story, the timeline, and, and then that's all around right. the character. But what are they supposed yeah. to do? Like, I guess like, we have to figure we have like 11 actors. So we have to figure out which actor is playing which of the 11 characters. And also, who are the 11? Like, I think that's kind of... Yeah. Eric, you're developing a script right now, aren't you? What challenges are kind of facing that? And, um, you know, that you can help us. Um, what have you overcome already that you can kind of give us some tips and pointers when we're doing your character development? Where do I say? I have to figure out how, where do I want, how are they changing, and what is their development to have this need to change because a character that doesn't change is going to mm -hmm. or isn't going to add anything. Really Especially for the protagonist. Yeah. So pretty important. The character growth. The character growth. You have, they have to have a reason to either fight or a reason to do what they have. I think that is true for comedy, but less so. Because, like, you know, it doesn't, it's like, well, not it's actually, not like the godfather. I use, I use fight in a metaphor, but you, you don't have fighting. No, no, no. Yeah. Inside. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. But, um, uh, like, character growth, I think, is, I think it is pretty much like important story. No, but, but for comedy, it's like, it's, it's not as, like, pressed, you know? Right. I know I do a lot of comedy, and in several roles I've done in some independent films, I am allowed to improv. Mm -hmm. And I think that mainly be my strength is comedy improv, uh, thinking something of witty to say, feeding off of the other person um, spontaneously. So this, so I'm going to have to kind of dive a little deeper in this exercise of developing this character and going into um, what you guys are saying that you've done with your writing and your script. Um, do you find that when you are developing a character, does it happen organically or do you really have to do a lot of research and put some like, deep thought process into, okay, what's going to happen? How is this character going to change? Um, how, what do you, what do you do to kind of, to, to create that, your creative process? I would imagine that comes natural along, along the process. I think like while you're, while you're, you it know. kind of flows organically. Do you think that you just have to have a talent to be a writer or can you learn to write? I, think I personally, mm -hmm. I've never had any writing training. I've never thought of this. I just thought, oh, I have this idea. Let me write it down. And as I read it, I realize my writing is crap, but I have, I have an idea on where I want to go. I know how to make it. That makes money, makes sense. But I am not a writer. I know that if I somebody, they probably like, not that good. I know, I have a strap. Have someone where they know where to write, know where to drive, they know where to go to have my real and the reference right, make it how I have it. Right, right. I see what you're saying. I kind of can relate it. I used to be in education and almost like a lesson plan that if something happened to me suddenly, someone could come in and, you know, take over the classroom and, and have something scripted out. If it, the more detailed, the better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, um, that being said, do we, do we all kind of know like, like what the story is? No, sort of, because there's a lot of like, plots. There's the overall plot mm -hmm. with the guy made about the robot guy, and then but what parts are well, probably explored? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, um, the robot um, does want some changes to happen. I don't know if I'm specifically supposed to talk about that, but the robot wants some changes to happen in their life. But, I mean, um, and it's kind of like, I think the antagonist would be a uh, store owner, like, no, we don't. I don't want that to happen. The one that dated him. And it's almost, it kind of reminds me, I have children, I have adult children, and it kind of reminds me of um, what you want to be. You have these children, you or you have this creation. What do you want it to become? And what does it really want to become? And um, the, the control struggle and... Um, I think things can develop from that. Um, just looking at it from, uh, you know, a parental aspect and kind of this uh, character that's created this robot is the parent. Mm -hmm. um, so, Steve falls in love with a human girl who visits her. Steve is the robot. Um, he falls in love with a human girl who visits her. But the relationship is threatened by a bearing father's robot. Okay. Overbearing fathers. Mm -hmm. There's a topic. <laughs> a group of these breaks into the print shop to steal a valuable artifact. Like, what is this artifact, I think? The question is, what is it like? Maybe it's what gives Steve his powers. Maybe it's the thing that, maybe it's, you're the the gypsy lady right right maybe yeah. you come in you give him some special crystal or whatever and that and he uses that to wake steve up or but if whatever. they take that may not work is steve going mm -hmm. to be it's a good question to, yeah but steve, and that's steve alive then take really kill him. yeah so good. maybe so maybe it's it's just it's just uh something that gives life it doesn't really keep life but what's well, what are the benefits what are the disadvantages so on granted it, uh, it, it oh i see what you're saying in the wrong hands um then of course it's gonna have negative comments. the impact that the on impact steve. would be let's see is it the right word? So, so um Oh, that just kind of something came to mind when you were saying, okay, it, then it could kill, if he did this and then you know, it could end the robot or kill the robot. So that kind of like steps into, is, is it better to live a long, long life um, doing this, following the safe path um, that's brought before you? Or is it better to take a few risks and, you know, follow your passion? Okay, here's an idea. Um, so Geppetto has a print shop uh, and this uh, crystal brings technology. So what if the thieves who come into Steve 
steal it, own a competing print shop, and there he wants to use the crystal to, to wake up, to make robots of his own, to snuff out his business, to basically take his print shop, buy it out. I'm trying to think of a reason that, because you, you said what, what would be the negative impact of having this crystal stuff. Maybe, so this, what does this crystal just bring technology to life, or does it bring any, like, statue or thing, like, like maybe, maybe just, I, I imagine it would bring any, like, 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 say this camera or this microphone, give it, like, life, I don't know. Okay. That's a good question. Because if it's, like, thing where, like, it gives anything, like, not with a body, but, like, like a statue, way, like, something like that to life, maybe they have, like, an army of, like, stone like, creature that's, like, stone. Crystal, it mm -hmm. turns into life and they can you like, cause havoc or like how how crazy are this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying and, to figure out. And are the thieves like mad scientists? Are they like crazy? Like psycho psychotic? Right. Yeah, are they right, crazy? Do they wanna what are their what's their to destroy the city? To take this guy out? Right. Because their... uh, I'm trying to find I, I feel like uh, the I love Robert's idea of opposing company. It can almost be like a prodigal prodigal son type thing with this robot. Okay, maybe I will step out. He, he's trying, you know, my my overbearing father is trying to run my entire life. Maybe it's best if I step out um, with his competitor and I've actually known someone in real life that did that. Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> now here's the thing too. What is what, what, the owner is Geppetto, right? What is his relationship to this upload? Are they like, did, because Geppetto's going to be like, what, like uh, elderly, right? Six right, months, right. 60. The relationship. Yeah, yeah, like, and is these criminals who are stealing this, let's say, a former uh, boss to me and he's like, hey, he didn't like my idea. Of me, I want to make this. I use it as my own. It's. it's the... uh, I think it should be Geppetto's brother. His Ooh. twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> twin brother. Okay. That means yeah. he actually is gonna work twice. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, yeah, and then they use this crystal. To do what? I mean, because we could. If it's a, yeah, I th I think what does the crystal do? Is a point because it has to make sense for. So it definitely makes it brings Steve, a robot child, to life. It just brings life. What else? Right. And like, what else can it do? Um. What makes this? It just brings one person, one life, and I steal it. Yeah, I think what makes want. sense is that it like it brings a robot to light out like it can like give like sentience to like, like any kind of like technology you know, like light out you know, like. i mean it wouldn't make sense like it can't like, like yeah i know so i know be, like maybe it has to have a body maybe or not a body mm -hmm. that is to walk i would say with legs and eyes camera has eyes maybe, maybe it just gives anything with like, any kind of computer like it gives it like uh, conscious you know like, like it could like you could give a computer a life and it wouldn't be able to do anything it might be able to like write you messages on I mean, the screen it, i mean how smart because like, giving a computer a mind or an artificial intelligence Exactly. Like exactly. Lot. So that would be a good reason for this Ooh, evil person that to. Just, that just gave me an idea. What if they do that for a computer life? Computer betrays the owner. It's more officially getting more. And they just like, you know what? I might mm -hmm. that's it. That like, fire that idea. Right. No, we can't do that. I'm just. Wait, because yeah, I'm saying that like that would be good, but that would be that would be uh, breaking off of this outline. But that's what I'm saying. Like, um, like, Anton, are you completely opposed to us uh, breaking off of this outline and going? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so. so when I have the ending for the because I have an either idea that's all we're talking about. Actually. You know how I said, like, he'll steal gem or whatever it is? Mm -hmm. Then the goal is to have him interact with Steve, come and help him, right? Is that the goal that it's there? Um, versus... Yeah, the, well, the actors that came in and stuff, like, uh, not the actors, but uh, the, the people, the side characters who did come in, they, they band together to, yeah, to so help him. Well, basically, let's say they all go into, they, they all, because they all had, they all changed Steve, or they all had an impact Steve, they all care Steve. Maybe it's just, like, a great guy, and, like, they come in, he's, like, a part of the community, and he's, like, gives them advice and stuff like that. We could have, have air. they break his facility or pretend to like, go in and try to steal back the end. Oh, I think mm. Kanalita, um, Kanalita has questionable morals, so she would be someone good to bring. Either you're distracted on the outside, yeah. you're like, I, like, whatever jab, no, insult. Yeah, she has a white Mercedes and she has um, questionable morals. I, I love her already. Who's this? Kanalita. Oh, your character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My character that I love. Questionable morals and a white Mercedes. Mm. Yeah, okay. that's My a, kind of gal. Be a white Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what... <laughs> Oh, yeah. So she, so she does. Um, yeah, we might can play with that a little bit. What do we like? What do we like so far? Like, which direction of the screenplay that we have is up to all? Because we have the mm. beginning. is send the stone because of like, Gypsy brings the kids to life. We just yeah. don't have I'm, it. Yeah, I, I love that part. Like, yeah. that's a great starting point. But first the thing. middle to end is um, where all of us are at. And how do we I, like, I like someone c coming in and stealing it for their own benefit. Um, but I'm just trying to, trying to figure out what they use the crystal for and why is that bad. You know, you know, so and, like, and would it have... Would it have to be a crystal or would it, it be yeah, something it be that where she like um someone else has to lose something for the um, robot to be given life almost like an organ donor type thing mm. right? a life for a life right a life for a life mm. maybe the be good. Let's see, maybe the longer that he stays alive the more life yeah. Yeah. right and she's willing to do something she's willing to do that you know the life for the life thing if there's something for her in it we, 
which you know um right but what would she have i mean she's a she's a scam artist so yeah I mean, she's after money so but i mean once geppetto pays for this yeah. what's what is her what else could she well pay she's for? in for well possibly she's in for money for the competitive and the competitive company needs this robot so they're willing to pay it and they're willing to take the robot to destroy geppetto you know because they're they had the past beat whichever you guys would probably be better at developing that beat mm -hmm. works in the yep. is yeah. that all, yeah, he all he's it. done or did he like in his past just retire because let's say this enemy this other person could be someone from past yeah and then his brother and the and then the but the brother the brother had uh you know was morally corrupt and um inherited the father's business and and geppetto went out on his own and broke away family because he did involve in the negativity and that he was lonely created this robot to be family and it, it betrayed him too for the money and then you get in the capitalist maybe, maybe. was is geppetto incredible so him break branching off company lost their value had guys that's why he wants to out ran away from the company you made this company uh go bankrupt like that, right yeah um d d does anyone remember pinocchio yeah i, I, mean, I do yeah. so i'm trying because i had an idea and I was, I was just worried that it might be exact plot so like so what if steve gets stolen or, like pinocchio is public domain okay but yeah, i'm just i don't want to copy the story too much or, you know well already obvious that we're not copying. i mean robots having does, life is already pinocchio different. doesn't get stolen he runs away he run right well he runs away then gets bought up then gets sold off to some and, other person and yeah, the, the actor guy the puppeteer guy right yeah he gets sold up because the fox guy makes him think oh you two a guy make you fit and, and then, right, right, yeah okay. he had some um, marvelous okay. times with the donkey boys he didn't realize how long right. he was on yeah. pleasure island yeah well yeah we, i don't well, think we're not gonna take they had tails we they, don't have to they, go to they pleasure had the tails <laughs> the ears and they were yeah. on pleasure islands but but that was a uh that was a metaphor um he thought he was there for just a few minutes mm -hmm. he was with these little donkey boys which were basically addicts if you look back mm -hmm. you know they drank they were drank alcohol and smoked it's a children's movie but they were addicts he was on the island with these addicts Pinocchio was. He thought he'd been there for a couple of days. He'd been there for like a couple of years no, or months. No, I can't. That's not anything. Yeah. Pinocchio was or, there for the amount of time basically. What happened? Uh, why are we talking about Pinocchio? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Pinocchio. I just had an experience. Well, yeah. he was in Geppetto invented him. Um, in Pinocchio, his owner created, made the puppet and no, created know, him to come to life. So it's kind of like the robot. Like, I like how we ran, we ran yeah. stuff to just talk about like this is turned into yeah, a movie that, review. Oh, I was the, the donkey boys. They seemed to be, to be a lot of fun. But, uh, they were too much they were fun for a minute and then they weren't what do you mean that, that like movie, real life that movie traumatized things that are fun about? for a minute then they're not yeah, I was yeah I was scared I was scared of little children that were smoking cigarettes. Oh no, this kid, the part the part where they're playing billiards and then the kids start turning into a donkey. I got scared. Oh. You heard that? People are speeding or annoying. Um, oh, yeah. that was speeding. I thought it was wrong. Oh no. No. So the reason I um the reason I brought that up, I just wanted to make sure because uh, what uh, I think maybe is a good idea. I just had an idea. Is um uh, this the people who come in they steal steep and maybe it's a guy it's a, it's a tech a tech CEO who's been trying to come up with an AI robot his entire life. Life, but he's never succeeded and then he sees steve a working conscious robot and so, then he hatches a plan to break in and steal steve so he can finally achieve dreams so steve yeah. is so the, they're not so there's no gem anymore now the steve exactly yeah, i just changed now this is now reminding me of iron man right come in and steal. so iron man robert downey jr i did a scene with him oh, he's good like, for you. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. good for you. i'm the sympathizer i'm the sympathizer no but i, I like that and yeah then, it then just simplifies the story so now the journey is getting steve back and stuff maybe the overall goal they're trying to rip apart steve to see my or anything or or just yeah reverse engineer him or or claim him as your own but how do you re go explain that well, that's to the thing. It's uh, magic. reverse they, engineer they don't they, since they think reverse engineer is like taking something apart to see how it's okay yeah. Yeah. but since it was magic that brought him to life they'll just destroy him and not get the answer so it, right, it'll be right. in charge of the side care job to get him back mm -hmm. right exactly before of course he gets destroyed and I, no one gets back. i can tell you two are writers i love the way that you're um, feeding off of each other with the ideas and flowing and, and but you're writing it and talking about taking the steps in a structured way and breaking it down. So you're doing a little bit of reverse engineering here by being handed yeah. this that's <laughs> not your own and you're revert, kind of doing some reverse engineering. So that's yeah, amazing, cool. amazing. Now here's the thing, everything we discussed about our story is supposed to be a comic, so how make it funny? Oh, we know? can add that. Maybe we can add that little bit. Yeah. I think story is most important. Even greatest comedy story. Yeah. So, um, or and then you're like, uh, unless it's like Seinfeld, the, the show about nothing. <laughs> the story right, about right. nothing, but they 
there were just kind of that witty banner was in there in this everyday life. I like that's right. what we're all doing. We're all talk witty. I like yeah. So now the, the the actors can encompass. There can be a head thief like or the CEO guy, and he can have henchmen. Are they whatever. competent henchmen or incompetent? Henchmen. Mm, maybe I, I like yeah. it. I like an, uh, I like a good old incompetent. But I'm, I'm I think I think yeah. yeah I mean, uh, I think uh, a good idea would be who are the actors that are who are the uh, characters that band together um, to save and like all the side characters. Yeah, all yeah. Them, but, like, and like, are they pe like who are they? Are they people that just come in the print shop and like have a good experience with Steve or something? Like, why are they so well helped? Maybe because you know? like you said, really, maybe, maybe Steve helped out a lot of the robot. Maybe he had like not, not like, able to help things else. Like, mm -hmm. they take like, where they could maybe someone. Or he's a he, he could do anything. He can help them with their homework. He could. He's smart. Maybe. Yeah, he's like he has a he has like Google in his head. So. Maybe it's so it's so maybe the side character they could all be like, hey, this guy's helped us all out. What this guy act on this? They, right, right. With this guy, I go into this. You know? Yeah, yeah. Some they help. He helped them with a very important aspect yeah. of their life, which makes them want to come back. There's this most amazing. When you said incompetent henchman, there's an amazing um, guy in my acting class from Hawaii, and he would be. The, I just it just popped in my head. He would be the most amazing, funniest, incompetent henchman. Because <laughs> several of the um, um, roles he's played in our acting class, which we study, we study Meisner. What acting class? Brian Cutler Brian Studios Cutler. in Burbank. Oh, okay. And um, teaches the Meisner method. Cool. And just a, there's just some amazing improv going on in that class. And I'm just, I just thought, oh God, he would be, I could get him mm. to do that. Just the most amazing and confident henchman to add some funny um, lightness kind yeah, of to yeah. kind of, you know, yeah. the storyline. Yeah, that can, uh, yeah, that can happen. Like, that like icing on the top of the yeah. very end, you know. Yeah, just. Now, just here's the thing, too, that I realized. You can have a great plot at the end. How does that differ from three other like, horrors like, of the group that will come? Exactly, and will they, will everyone be cool with it? Because I honestly like this idea better than the original script. Mm -hmm. Maybe they did the original script and they had an idea. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it all depends on, I feel like it all shows on like which group. First we split out of the five groups two ideas that are the best in the world. I honestly like where our story is going, and I mean, that's probably biased working on it. Mm -hmm. Right. So how the, I mean, we, we uh, need to get all together and see what idea, because honestly. I think we'd have a better chance of everyone coming on board if we fill in exactly 11 slides lots of characters that are in Paul's story. Because yeah. then we'd do the work ourselves and we'd kind of... The last thing I wanted to say, no, your idea, make it. Right, that's yeah. the last thing I wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, I don't want to do that guy. either. Now do you... But, but they, I don't think they really came up with any of I mean, I'm, I look at their, their things and they, they just kind of had some... Well, some and, and he brought up a good point. He was like, I don't want to insult anybody, but um, think about this. Who, who are some of the uh, most accomplished writers in the industry? And I'll think about, have, do you think, yes or no, that they've ever insulted or stepped on any toes? Oh, oh yeah <laughs> to get to where they are absolutely so you gotta kind of like think of what you want to do writing pop. maybe is it worth is the end result of the work or the creative process are you going to have to that writer step on mm -hmm. so i mean everyone did start I, I hate to say that but i mean yeah. if we come out of this with a better idea i'm yeah they i don't think we're stepping on anyone's toes i think they didn't because they didn't uh they didn't come up with a, a story or anything they just kind of wrote down some characters they might like that. like they didn't they really? didn't really they didn't really get anywhere because what we're doing, because um, the is I might be, <laughs> that might be going over. I haven't seen their podcast, yeah. so um, yeah, I, like I can't say that. Them right now by saying, like, I know, I know, that's the thing. <laughs> and I mean, um, which I, I, which I don't mean to if, uh, if you're insulted, it's coming that way, this, I don't feel like <laughs> I, I don't mean, we don't, we don't mean to insult that is you. not the purpose. <laughs> we're not here to be like, your idea is shit, get out of here. Right. We just we just needed a script that would uh, we felt confident with adding characters to. I feel like the most important thing at a show or anything is the story. any. You, you mm -hmm. can have the best character. If there's not a good story, you're not going to go anywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wherever it's at. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. And it's all about perspective, too. Like, you were saying, like, we're not saying you're, you know, yeah, and then, like, this, but my goal is to, to add them all in to have the biggest influential part of it. Some right. Some people's manure or, or others' people's fertilizer. So, I mean, it's all about. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> you a, like that? You like that? Like that. <laughs> it's all about perspective, right? Oh. oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, coffee, so I think it's coffee, coffee, coffee. I don't drink coffee. You don't drink coffee. I don't, I don't, I don't a couple of people. Do you eat don't. tomatoes? That is my two. If you have things that you like. Um, I mean, I don't eat them with, like an apple, but I mean, <laughs> I, I just. But you will eat a tomato? I'll put a tomato on a burger. Okay, that's, that's, that's kind of go. my thing. You either have to eat a tomato or you have to drink coffee. If you don't drink coffee and refuse to eat a tomato, I, you know, I, I question what's going on with you. <laughs> what is the, I understand the coffee, but what about the tomato? 
where, where did that come from? I just don't think it's normal not to enjoy not to, coffee. Or they don't think it's normal. Like, I mean, no, one or the other. One or the other is okay. But if, if you <laughs> don't like coffee and you will not eat tomatoes, I don't understand um, tomato. Like, what is a tomato? To me? Like, is that tomato, like tomato, tomato, potato, potato? Because I mean, if people don't like a good chocolate chip that's cookie, like, that's what we all like. Look, look, look. Um, there, there, there's going to be a few things that, as you go on in life that you're going to be like, oh no, they're they're they're, they're one of those people that don't like coffee. <laughs> Tomatoes. I mean, I'll put a tomato on a burger. I, like I don't ketchup. trust them. I don't trust them. <laughs> no, I mean, a tomato's a good add on to a burger. I like how this is our conversation as he gets his coffee. <laughs> he wanted Absolutely. coffee. Absolutely. Well, he drinks coffee, so we know he's okay. <laughs> he, one of, he, he does one of them at least. He so. drinks coffee, I eat the tomato. You eat the tomato, so together it's all good. It's all good. It's great. Uh, and I'm trustworthy. I, I drink coffee and I eat tomatoes. Oh, wow. Oh. You're trustier. You're more trustworthy than Bull Nine Bear. I am <laughs> super. I am nothing. Thing like Canalita. <laughs> so it's going to be so much fun to play Canalita. You're going to be a... I'm a giver. She's a taker. And I'm going to enjoy have, it. Are you going to have an old gypsy accent? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm just gypsy. I'm going I think to I try. Just, I'm going to... I need some blue bro I think brochure. I just insulted half the gypsies in America. <laughs> I need some blue brochure. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to develop a, an accent. Well, I might do my... Um, there was a southern lawyer I knew in South Carolina. And he yeah. talked like, talk like this a little bit. And I may bring some of that. You know? Where were we? <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> he was getting coffee. That's tea. Yeah. Yes, he had, he, had, he had chai tea, and I love chai tea. Oh, I don't chai like tea either. It's too hot like for me. Coffee? So, or tea? Okay, let's get into this. Is it the heat? Because it's the heat. If you like, don't I, like coffee, you don't like thing, hot tea. Don't, it's the heat. I, it's the heat that's wrong with it. Because I drink it, and I'm like, ah, too hot. Burn my tongue. <laughs> you burned yourself as a child. You know, I had this spaghetti go burn child when you would drink. would eat spaghettios. That was something we had in the 70s real big. Yeah, I don't know if you guys love spaghetti. I would eat. Yeah, you saw. You were like, I, oh, saw, I saw the commercials. I, saw the commercials. I didn't eat the spaghetti. I, didn't, I, didn't I saw the, spaghetti. the commercials. Yeah, like. It. But if you ate them too hot, your mouth, that's where your mouth would bubble up from these little blisters. Like, so, you know, that could have happened. <laughs> like, but you didn't get the spaghetti o bird. You missed that. That was big <laughs> in the seventies and the eighties. Spaghetti o bird. Yeah. Um, uh, Anton. Um, so you you did you did see their podcast or you were at least here during this? <gasps> oh, okay. Just so you don't you don't really remember too much of what they talked no, about? Not much, okay. Not much. Because like, I wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure we weren't stepping on too many toes or no, throwing out their ideas. Okay, okay, but but to make it a good collaboration, we we don't want to we don't want to insult or scrap anybody's ideas that have already. Okay, well, yeah, I'll just trust that. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, I like the, the psychic lady is a good character. She's, she's still, she, so she's the one, but why, why did she, um, uh, why is she willing to bring the robot to life? And I think we discussed this before he showed up. Basically. Money. Oh, money. But does he have money to give her? He has that much money to, right. uh, if he has I thought he was poor. Yeah, I thought he, no, I don't, I think we could, uh, in the script. She I has to have something, to, she gets something out of it. Yeah, and to make him become human. Yes, right there. Just He's gonna get money. Does he get money? Basically, he wrote here, like, uh, Geppetto says that the magic was real, magic, uh, just like smile. Yeah, you don't really, basically says that you're just here spring a conversation, probably you're a regular here. And oh, oh, I'm okay, I don't like Fig Newtons. <laughs> and she's talking Thank a little you. bit about business, she's a regular, she's coming to get her brochures, because like, anyone knows that a very good psychic has to have the top-notch brochure. Wait, well, you said she's a regular. Now, is she, oh, okay. is she a regular? Like, yeah. Like, so maybe because she's been here the longest, and maybe she's seen that he's lonely, and he's like, well, maybe I, because you're a scammer too, maybe he is close to, maybe you're close to him, and that's why you're like, I'll take pity on guy and give him, maybe, because she's, she may be a scammer, but is she right. a bad person? Yeah, well, she is a capitalist. She represents capitalism. To me, she's going to represent uh, the dollar, the end, the uh, end justifying the means. Maybe you need a pr you need something printed to help your psych. Yeah, okay, I like that. She's coming in. And I'm, she's yeah, getting I'm just trying to think of what service printed. he could fill for her. Yeah, because they, they're in the print shop, right? And maybe you're, yeah, you're just, you're like, I don't have any money, but I, I could bring your robot to life if you want. Right, well, and she's saying she doesn't have any money. She does actually but she's kind of like in there she's gonna get she gets she's getting it yeah, she, she prints them out for free she's yeah. she manipulates maybe, them too she manipulates for, everyone maybe magic for her is like like to come by you know oh i don't need to worry about this oh magic see like with mm -hmm. me it's not like not like magic's hard to come by you know it takes me a liver and a fingernail to be able to make this spell you know right. maybe like she she has access to the magic which makes it easy for her to be like you know what i'll just bring your i'll just bring your robot to life you know mm -hmm. free of charge you or yeah i don't charge yeah we could 
be that. It was but just she easy. did. Yeah, but mm, she's not going to do it free of charge. She's saying she's going to do it free, but nothing in life is free, right? Well, anytime the people get right, anytime people offer us, what, free Botox, free, um, <laughs> what's something else? What you guys it? see on Facebook, you're being open, offered free. What, wait, what, who's there's offering no such thing. Well, 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 any kind of app. Well, there's like, no who's thing. offering free Botox? <laughs> I don't know why you want some? Are you ready, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> Is it time? No, I mean, people, people <laughs> said dry skin this morning, you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> who's offering you free well, Botox? <laughs> I'm not, Tilden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling everyone out there where to go get the free Botox. No way. No way. I'm you know where to get not. free Botox? Mm -mm. Good. And I'm not telling you either. <laughs> <laughs> Cinnamon nor Canalita will tell. Will ever tell. But yeah, um, so she's in there. She's going to um, tell them she's going to do it for free. And then, but there is a price they have. Okay, what's the catch? What's the price? You guys come, you guys come up with a okay. price. <laughs> mm, okay. It's so got to be something heavy. And then they have to realize, is it worth the price to bring him to life? Or would it better to be dead than whatever this price is? Maybe the price is, I'm gonna say the print shop itself, no, but like, and then at the end, when everyone's back together, they're like, you know what, we'll help you make a print shop. You know, we'll help you make, because the cash was to give this print shop, and they didn't necessarily say, you can't make a new shop, right? At the end, yeah. so that way he gets back together, makes a print shop, and then that's, yeah. how the, that's how it could end. Print shop, and together, as goes, so everyone's happy. Yeah. He has a new print shop with the sun there, you know, and then. Yeah, that's beautiful. What do you think, Robert? I'm oh, sorry, could you, could you say that last part again? He has <laughs> had all of it. Had hot tea. That's the price you pay, Robert, for drinking hot tea instead of the hot uh, uh, coffee. Exactly, a little yeah, less caffeine, a little less caffeine. No, basically, when the price that uh, uh, price was that this uh, the print shop be the price, but mm -hmm. they don't tell me. And everyone's disappointed that oh, the print shop's dead. Oh, actually. she doesn't inform him until the end. yeah. Oh, okay. And then like everyone's sad that the print shop's gonna go away, but they are all happy. The robot's back. And Japan is happy to be with the robot. That's what's more mm -hmm. important. Like I don't care if my print shop's gone. I have you back. Done. And then he's like, you know what? Let's build you a new print shop. Let's right. business that'll bring you back together. That way. That'll help her repay the debt. Robot. And what could that business be? Something that a little robot could do. Well, I was thinking like a tutor, you know, like for kids who are struggling in school. I feel like it has to That'd be, be a business that he could do. I, I feel like the, the the new shop or whatever it is has to correlate with like some with like the PA. Like a or it could be a community, like a community area where everyone gets together. You know, if you need to call something, they're there to go with. Maybe if you need therapy, I'm just been asking. Like, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm trying to figure out what that would. But be. Um, or it's something really profound. Live out. Uh, that Kanalita, she's given somehow whatever she did, he like um, absorbed somehow like the power to heal with something that maybe the children come in and he can do some type of healing or, or he can give them or they can have sight possibly maybe if someone doesn't have sight when they're with him or touching him or something they can have sight for a brief moment. So somehow sharing a piece of, hmm. of himself. I, I'm thinking uh, maybe it's just like you guys ever heard of Edward Casey? Okay, well he was this guy who like um, he like like went into a trance and. He, like, he was kind of like a psychic himself. Like he would go into a trance and he would like answer people's questions. Like like people would have like really deep questions. Like you know like I love where you're going. Yeah, like uh, they they would be like you know like uh, like what is gonna happen in like 2025? Like he like it's like back in the 70s he'd be like China's gonna take over. Like blah blah. blah. Like he was just like kind of like a what's the word like a soothsayer a or like prophet. Yeah yeah. So maybe this maybe this robot is like a prophet of sorts. Like I it gives people answers to their like the most important problems. Problems. The gift of problems. He just comes up with it because he's, he has like an unlimited database, but he also has like a soul now. So he's like able to like kind of give you the perfect answer. And so maybe he does that for a number of people. And then that's why they're so like indebted to him. That would make him a lot more significant than just this robot that comes to life. Right, right. That's Ooh, what- You're gonna give him a reason to fight. That's a good idea for that. Like, oh, I yeah. think maybe he's always had that be, and that's why they see, you know, that way they can see mm -hmm. how their profit ends. But if they don't like it, see like tweet and see how where they would wrong and then never fail by that's how we, that's why the enemy want to see the future and then they can fail or more lives or whatever the hell they're in mm -hmm. because let's say they see the profit tusker and they don't like the way it is. they, they can alter is, it yeah. alter uh, so the how, end of their life how do they find out about it maybe right. by word of mouth accidentally like mm -hmm. let's say two side characters are like oh yeah the guy this really helped me out he said i was mm -hmm. gonna he said i was gonna die to cancer if i did this and i did and i changed no i do i did that i, yeah, I, I don't think know why that, i thought cancer well, i don't know why i thought that well i think that dives in a lot of man to humanity like if we knew a different future would we do things differently that? or you know um, or is it better for us to just fail a thousand times and fall flat on your flat on your face i know some of my best life lessons
lessons have been learned from failure, no, not, not success. That. And so you know how it, you know, maybe Kyle's into um, the bigger men. Um, yeah, that's the thing that'll go into the issue. Like, like oh, he, you know, like, where was, like you said, like everyone learned failure, but no one, how you fail, right. where do you grow in that? We shouldn't right. go off there. That'll just take away the value. Uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Or maybe just, yeah. It'll give the audience a bad image. Like, oh, if you don't, what's the point of failing when you, like, right. maybe we shouldn't do that just in order to have a good message, you know? Right. Is it, um... And do we want the story to have a good message? Is that important to us? That's a good, right, that's a good question. Like, do we want people to leave this feeling philosophically? Like, wow, you are all a good life lesson I learned. Or do we just want yeah, pure entertainment? Like, no life lessons right. learned. Whatever, I think, yeah, like, whatever it comes out, as it comes out. Right now, there's an amazing show called Hack. She Mark. She is the only woman that has ever done a Southern accent that fooled me. She is actually from Seattle, Washington, and her husband passed away two years ago. She's mm -hmm. a producer out here, and she, um, you know, somewhere around my age, and she has uh, um, dove back into acting, and she was in Babylon, the uh, you know, B, and then she's doing hacks. But anyway, uh, the reason I'm chasing that rabbit is because she is so entertaining and so funny in the show Hack, and there are so many life lessons. There's a younger actress, and I can't think of her name right now. I do know it, but um, she's a comedian, and and Jean Smart comedian, and they are so funny together in the age gap mm -hmm. um, is there in the um, which makes it beautiful mm -hmm. um, kind of like this project they're doing and there are so many life messages in, about growth character development and how viewpoints change and forgiveness and uh, so many and it is funny it is funny mm -hmm. funny funny and yeah. um, she's won there's several awards for that so maybe we could do both I have an idea, funny yeah, but I have an idea like what we were talking about you know how all this and there maybe uh, robots capture and they try to like reverse air, take away that ability so at first there is robots is now you can't but then they're like oh, but that's not why we like, like you were there so he loses that power but that's like everywhere around so that, could, that could be the life lesson learned there like you like here doesn't have friends so. um right so, well, like yeah. uh so uh anton you said are you is it 11 exactly actors or is that like, until now so and now there's 11 tomorrow three more or so oh, yeah, okay we have, well, we have we're gonna so, have about yeah. 15 to uh, okay so uh, i think yeah if we like we actually get a character list that fits with the story that we just came up that would be like that would be like an act progress because you know? then we, we could all we could all actually all start filling in our you know well we couldn't do our own characters someone was charged with the script uh, so yeah um i don't know I, yeah i think the least we could do is like just yeah get this this plot line fleshed out let's let's talk a little bit about how this company's chat chat came this morning what experience has happened let's go you came first i did i did chat gpt um so basically we had a couple of ideas about um Tanalita and so typed it the program and um it produced a script from those ideas from those basic ideas so let's come let's well, let's throw all right the mix. Well, what we both right now we have a middle or we have a beginning middle and end with the script we just piece together have gypsy lady bringing the kid the, the corporation stealing the, the robot and then a like, few people came in to support the rescue the robot rescue the robot and build this new shop mm -hmm. based on the like just like the friendship or whatever without without the the psychic power they're experiments out because well, i feel like he should lose those powers just to have impact he should lose his like Google database powers, but keep his soul. Basically. Yeah, keep his soul. Like lose, lose the psychic powers or the profit powers. The computing power. Yeah, that. One. And he's now just a regular person. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and that gives a good message. Like you don't have to have all these special things mm -hmm. you're with. But what do they? I like the idea of losing the print shop because that like kind of adds a little like uh, what you call it. It gives a good scene. At the Not end. twist, but uh, like curveball at the end. But um, so what? What could they? They all band together and create what you know as like a sort of like happy. End. Like what could they? You know, some trying. Good area to, to get together. Like this, this location like a small town or a big town because if it's a small town like a nice meeting area where people could go and like get stuff done or like stuff like that but if it's a big area then that's not going mm. I mean it could but I mean what I'm hearing is that human interaction probably is better than technology yeah that could be like the overall <laughs> uh, overarching lesson sure yeah. Anelita reading the chat G input and response is more close. yes I have my thing I'm yeah. going through yeah. that line so I, li I like okay, the story I just mind. I hope we can uh everyone can be on board and you know because we have said 50 I think for what we have we could fit 15 people in because, because we need a new boy we got Geppetto we have the, we have the corporation the we should have CEO like two, guy the CEO guy he like, should have two henchmen two basically henchmen. Like, that's six we like, should have at least four that have interacted yeah with. that's ten that's ten and then like other people be, if they be I don't want to give them minor roles like deliverism but yeah. like maybe we should, should be like all corporations so like maybe like two henchmen guys oh like employees house. of the 
print shop? Yeah. Land, land you get like two. And then like two more like, corporations, two, and two actual people run off. Right, right. Like lab or technology yeah, people. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 that are reverse theory. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, damn. That's like, that's 15 right there. We could, oh, we could write that list and that would be like a legit step forward, you know? Okay. And then, um, George wanted me to read what was from. Yeah, what basically, with ChatGPT is basically you put a prompt in ChatGPT and it gives you out a script or a screenplay. So right now, it's uh, amazing, actually. Uh, you said your name was Simmons, right? Simmons, Simmons is going to read off just an uh, exam prompt that what uh, George, uh, George had yeah. written. And then and then uh, she's going to then read what it gave, what it spat us out. And that's what we're going to do. We do. That's, what, that's how we're going to have this script written. We're going to throw it into ChatGPT and then see what it spits out and modify it a little bit just to make sense. Because sometimes chat GBT go off the rail and give us none. And sometimes mm -hmm. it depends on how it feels at the time. So, um, chat GBT doesn't have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I've seen. You have least. to add some humanity. I've seen it spit out crazy things before. Antonio Agent Shop. Can Alita, a gentleman with a psychic bit in Can Alita to Japan? Do you have any brochures for my psychic bit? Japado, sure, here you go. Can Alita takes the brochure or starts talking to Japan? Can Alita says, you know it's all a waiting game. Waiting for the right people, waiting for the right mom. Geppetto, I wish the magic real. Canalita, the magic is real. You just have to believe. Geppetto sighs, looking around the empty print shop. Geppetto, so lonely here, I wish I could have a robot. Canalita gives him a sly mind. And Canalita whispers, in the, in the scene end. And that's what it gave. You're supposed to read the prompt out there. But that's can, can you explain? What, is what the was, prompt what, what made uh, the computer give this result? What did I that do was exactly? A, that was the prompt, basically. And what okay, you gave was, was a script that Okay, is, that was the script that it came out. And, that, right, yeah, and right now, that is, that is the prompt that at uh, George put into that to be able to give Okay, so he, so now, so he typed this in. Yeah. Okay, so now we have to generate a screenplay page. I am in the podcast studio with actress Cinnamon Beckham and Eric Estrada, and we are going to come to your help a scene in the screenplay format. Cinnamon is playing the character Canalita, and Mr. Estrada plays the character Antonio. Interior print shop of Antonio just exit the print shop. When Canalita enters the print shop, she looks like a, like a psychic at Chipotle counter inside. So these, this is what is typed that, that is what it was typed down, or at least spoken to it, and that's what chat gave. That's what chat like understood is like okay, and then it gave us a script, and that's that's what the beginning of the script they said, right? I, someone exits, you enter. Oh wow, that is amazing uh, to me that to, that it understood. Um, and that's how he, that's how he wants us to have our script run. Like we and we like write a summary of it, see what it spits out because we don't have that much time to like, all of us write a script. So the AI is gonna write it for us. We're just gonna modify. If we don't like some parts, we'll just modify it because you whatever. Whatever it fits us out, we can then modify and then have it be mm. add more or do it again. Yeah, I think the most important part is like the new script outline. So. I, think, I like what we've come mm -hmm. from. It's creative, it's different than what we have. It has at least a timeline mm. that needs to, to get going. I think Cinnamon just had the realization. Uh, why are you astonished? Yeah, I, I mean, I am because it's not. Um, it's not right. It, it was so. Um, it, was, it was just fractions of ideas it spit out in fluid. Great. And that's what. For, that's a chance to have that. You know, that way, no, no, that way not one, because he's, you know, he doesn't have time to write scripts that's like 90 pages for a 90 week. So the chat's gonna input, pop, 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 and it's gonna mm. spit us out, spit out every main character. So life. are these how productions are, there were so many more production when, um, before the internet. You know, when I was younger, very, uh, there was a lot, uh, a long process to get a film out or a television show. Is this type of technology how they're doing it so quickly? I mean, probably, I can't speak for them, but I mean, I have no idea. I don't know. Because for me, That'd be crazy. For, I know for me, and I'm pretty sure when we're, is, stuff, right. when we're writing our stuff, it took me over a few months just to pack a story that I want. Heck, I'm still probably up ways right now. It's not easy writing a story. Heck, it's not an idea. A little having more. So. It probably helps with dialogue, sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're seeing dialogue. And... Yeah, sometimes it's hard dialogue that's funny, witty, funny. Sometimes it's a good story, but like you don't know what any of your jokes at. You know, like punchline, that's a good idea, back off that. So, Anton, is, um, mm -hmm. could I send you um, our, our new uh, script outline, which is, which is based on this? Yes. Uh, okay. Can, can, would you would you rather input it in ChatGPT at home on your own account um, and then spit out some results and send me just? Um, well, right now we just want to send the the outline. The outline. We, we don't yeah. want to okay. send the actual script. Just yeah. the new plot of it because I feel like our plot has more of a dynamic. Not, uh, like not insulting the old. I'm pretty, I think that's fine too. But I think this one would have more of an it impact. It flows together. It flows together and it'd be a good use for all the fifteen actors. Yeah. We, yeah. We know how to incorporate actors now. Would you be able to cinnamon to read? The second example, so we work together, Eric, is, and then so the one that he, he Mike walked in, yeah. So I think uh, that's Robert Manel and mm. Robert created a scene for you. 
we gave text to speak. Oh, Tell right. Tell us, Eric, what happened? So basically, when you walked in, remember how he, he asked you for your name? I think your name was Mark or something. That's he, Mike. Mike, and then he spoke it out, and he mm -hmm. had chats spin out the script. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. And he had, and then you had the script. So basically, can, can you explain what happened? Mike, C. Okay. can you give him a copy of Mike's? Yeah. Um, here is Mike. Oh, Mike, C. Okay. Yeah, like, look. So okay. read the the prompt that was written and then the back of the action. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. So so what about the? What am I supposed to do? With Just that? read the what about, what about, uh, the script. Um, say again. Read read the back prompt. That's what was thrown into the chat and then the back. Okay. Is that, and so why why are you having us read this? Just as an example of showing us how this works. To show the other actors how it's changing. Oh okay 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 yeah. So to the other actors, ChatGPT is a pretty pretty amazing uh, technology. Um, Anton just spoke into his phone very loosely, willy nilly, and he said, Robert Mantle just stepped out uh, into the podcast studio. So I'm here with Eric Estrada, Robert Mantle, and Cinnamon Becca Macklemore. Now, we have two characters established Antonio and Canalita, and Mike. Robert Mantle is going to play the character Mike. And this is all kind of before we came up with the script outline. So this is subject to change. Um, all change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. So like, this is just an example. Um, Robert Mantle. Oh yeah, okay. I'm discussing with him right now and he loves the idea that all the scene with the actors and then it's, yeah. So it's very loose language of Anton talking to his phone. And what came out of it was a script, which is um, interior print shop day. Mike walks into the print shop and looks around, finally spotting Geppetto at the counter. Mike, excuse me, are you Geppetto? Geppetto. Yes, that's me. Can I help you with something? Mike, I hear you're looking for nanotechnology to put in your machines. Geppetto looks at Mike suspicious. Who told you that? Mike, I have my sources. But the real question is, do you know what you're getting yourself into? Nanobots are powerful things. They can change your life, or they can destroy it. Geppetto looks at Mike and treat Geppetto. I'm willing to take that risk. I need the technology to build my boy robot. So this script was just taken all from Anton talking into his phone very loosely about uh, a scene with Mike coming into the print shop. Yeah, is that kind of what you're? Yeah. What What do you think about the idea or about the well, about the process of chatting? What does you um, this process This process would work, but later on, um, because right now, um, I. Think think we need uh everyone to be on the same page yeah we need a script right. outline and then if, if we have a um we have a place to start with a scene we could use it i mean do, do you think we have enough to i think we have a good a timeline a what a good timeline yeah yeah, yeah yeah um yeah so uh, i think it's good yeah yeah i think it's great i think it's great to develop the bone of the script and of course you have to add there's a just a human jazz you have to go through out yeah, and spice it up yes exactly. kind of like putting the lipstick on you know you can do a whole face of makeup you don't have the lipstick. Um, you can add jokes or it's, whatever. It's, it's, it's gone flat. Face is gone flat. So you have to have, yeah, you have to go back through and put the lipstick on. Or chapstick. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do that. So, yeah. Great foundation. Great foundation. This is a good start. I, I hope the other actors are on board. We, for the one and a half hour in here, we took care of a lot. We got a framework. We got how we're Yeah, that's the, what, uh, what yeah. was going to be the most challenging. I think it added a uh, element of interest. Are you, do you guys, uh, are you able to come next? Next time, a page of script character in it by using chat. No, we wouldn't be able to first need to see if everyone's on board. Like, that's the one thing that we have to honestly, we need to have that Zoom meeting add on to be able or yeah. some other way to be uh, because someone Ooh. sent in that, that uh, Google form and like said that only and I just hope that other people are either taking time to or, or take now that we've come as I'm more now that right. we have a story. At first, walking into this, I had no idea what <laughs> after it was 60 a dozen times. I mm -hmm. didn't know how, what my character was, who I was, what we we're doing. Was. And now that I'm on this far, I surely say that I'm comfortable forward on just the story. Although yeah. And you were at stress the... level midnight coming in this morning. Yeah. <laughs> stress level midnight. And this is a new um, thing that we're doing. It's not like, I mean, it's probably done before, but the way we're doing it, it's hard. But not everyone's all the time or no, in the in that chat that we all have. I mean, like, well, ever, right? Well, um, I think, you know, if the, a lot of effort's been made today in um, in development. So I think... Um, we have to fight for our... wants to not turn yeah. it down. Or not. That would be like, people are... If there's another idea, we should, like, not, uh, we should push for our eye now that we've gone to frame. Yeah, I'm not... Uh, there's too much of a turn. Of, of I mean, right. I, 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 think, yeah. I wouldn't want to. I think it's all about collaboration. Have, right. The end game is for me to have it have it. script. As a director, right. I would love to direct the script. That's what I'm trying to do for you. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope that so we can put it out to them and, and see if they're on work. board with that. Yeah. And then and hopefully everybody will just yeah. send out positive vibes, positive vibes out, and, mm -hmm. and, so and maybe we'll get good, some back in. It's a good outline, but as far as like a page of the script for our character, I don't. Yeah, I don't think that's out of order. Because uh, scripts aren't written 
isn't in order of character by character. It's They're in cool. order of the story. You don't like the story. scene with the nanotechnology? Um, well, no, well, yeah. Um, Let's read it again. I don't, well, I mean, like, you just threw that in, you just threw that willy-nilly together. Um, it's not that we don't like these cool. ideas, it's just that it didn't cut uh, it. it I, I mean, yeah, we, uh, but, um, but What's we, that about it? but we want to fit it into our, our, this new script, so, um, you can copy so it has to, maybe, to chat GPT, tell him your addition and what you want to remove from it, and he's gonna generate a brand new scene. No, no, the this issue is isn't the chat GPT, the issue is that you wrote that prior to our new script. What does this? No, we, um, we, I need to think about who, who my character is and why he comes in shop, and then, that's if, wait, that's if you're even someone in the you know, you could right, be working right. at the other yeah, company yeah. as a scientist. Or, yeah, and I, yeah, I might actually want to be like, you know, uh, I mean, like, I think it'd be awesome to be. What the, uh, information do you need from others? George, George, here's the, here's what we need. What we need is for everyone else to be on the same page. That's the one, because if we're, all, if we do this one and no one else knows about this, they're making a character based on the original script and that's, that's fine, I guess. Right. But I mean, we need to know that they, we need to have knowledge that they have the knowledge of this new script, that they want a script before we do anything, before we so do you any. You want to change the well, storyline. Yeah, that because. Just, just somewhat. Yeah, a little bit, because uh, it, we did today. Can we, you write it with the help of chat? Yeah, well. Uh, can chat GBT. Until next time. No, no, no. You can do it. Can you give him, you I, have give a, him a, I have a question. Just, just chat. Can Chat GPT do a script outline or just do? Yes, he can. They can, can do an outline. An outline? Yeah. Okay. Well, we could do that. We can do that. Yes. But and no. Eric had mentioned like everybody getting on board. In, in my past experience with groups, you may not get everybody on board, but I think maybe the majority. The majority rule. Yes. The majority. Of because as much as we want to do what you said, write a script for our character, we could do that. Let's say we all do that for ourselves tonight. We come back next time, and no, it wouldn't make and sense. No one's on board with it. So we just wasted a night of creative thinking, a night of mm. working for now. So we have to make sure that we are doing this with everyone else saying, yes, I want to do this, or yes, this sounds fun. And then after that, we have to know who's playing what character. Mm -hmm. Because as much as it'd be fun for us to create our own character and like, oh, how I incorporate Prince, we already came up with an outline of the characters are, what they do. We have to know now who takes which role. Because for all I know, let's say no, no one's assigned the kid robot, right? Have, have um, we assigned that or not? No, think, right? Uh, I'm not like- The kid a... robot is played by Joel Hart. I don't know. His is Steve. Oh, that. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Awesome. So we have the Great. That's so awesome. we have him. So we have him. We have Geppetto. Who's playing? Do we, we do have Geppetto? Yeah, uh, that's the that's Mr. Roberts, right? If it's not guaranteed. No, but I'm I saying... wrote to his wife. I'm waiting for an email from his wife. Yeah. His wife is his man. Oh, oh Eric Roberts, you said? Yeah. Oh, he was supposed to have? Yes. Oh, I actually okay. have on the table the letter Elisa Roberts, his mm. wife. Yeah. Can you guys read it on uh, air? So I Elisa, love maybe Elisa Roberts is I... watching this. Anybody watching, please send this to Eric Roberts. We we'll send a message to uh, his manager, his dear wife, Elisa Roberts. And we're we'll waiting for an answer. Love Eric Roberts oh, yeah. to participate He's amazing. I've watched work my entire life and it's so unpretentious. It's so authentic and raw and brilliant. He's great in uh, The Dark Knight. I think that's the only thing I remember him from. Yeah, um, I'm a little older. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think, I'm, I think um, I've seen it all. Did you find the letter to Elisa Roberts? Um, I did not. I don't think it's in my form, so I'll see it maybe. So, potential. It's this one. All right, so we'll just say we'll keep it open. Who no. plays Geppetto? All right. So, but it could I, be Armand Basante. It could be Tom Sizemore. That's our, we keep that open for the goal is to get a uh, a bigger name actor. I love right. to say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's just get Tom. Page. I mean, Why you not? can't even say you cannot say Armand Asante and it does not sound good in any accent. That Armand. What a stealing off of more beautiful Pinocchio. name. Stealing <laughs> off of more Pinocchio stuff. Let's just get Tom Hanks. <laughs> um, another Did thing that might it? that might get a little tricky is who's gonna mm -hmm. assign um character the rest of the characters I because if it's just like if it's like just me like I want to play the the, C the CEO guy like like you know like I do but no, I don't know, like that's not fair for me to just throw myself you in have that you, you have the face for it but i also the remember, remember the guy the guy who was sitting next to her he would also make a good ceo yeah yeah so, so just, i mean and then like you know if he just gets a message like oh you're gonna play like the random guy in the cool like staples right. paper holds the box yeah like you know like you know i held the box and dead mail off on so that's gonna be another I thing that's why i am advocating now that we now that we have people that'd be much easier for a zoom call assuming everyone's on board or at least i would like everything to happen on the podcast while watching the 
see how it happens. Okay. So when we're gonna have the final the product, the movie, then I wanna see how you guys met and how you created. Okay. As a director, I'm illiterate and I cannot okay. write a script. So if I see this script that you guys created together, that would be so valuable. Okay, okay. okay, so okay no, no. But That's... I feel like I feel like we should all at least big majority just be here and just discuss about it. Everybody's here, that's fine. We all did a lot of stuff here. But more, yeah, we... We've got a lot accomplished today. So you like, okay, done the individual group podcast. So you would like maybe a collaborative podcast so where one comes in. I mean, mm. we don't all have to have a mic. We can all be around. Like, okay. Everyone in. Like this one and mic and then like today. three people next to each individual mic. That would yeah. be a lot. <laughs> It'd be a lot, yes. But I mean, that would get the most work done. We, uh... It could be done. Could... Mm -hmm. I think it I still, so... yeah. we can go anywhere without, uh, because this is, Not he everyone. wants us about collaboration. We can't yeah. collaborate without people actually being here and exactly, actually yeah, agreeing yeah, with yeah, our I ideas. Agree, I agree. Music. One thought about, he had mentioned music earlier in the movie. He was going to play that. Oh, and I'm going to play this weird the music. Have you thought about this? is going to be Bolero. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bolero? Oh, there's a, uh, I love, there's a great mission that's really based in uh, Europe right now. Gabadelic. Pretty amazing wings. Gabadelic. I love Barnes Court. Wow. Unbelievable Barnes Court. I'm obsessed. He, uh, hey, Gabadelic, Barnes Court, and Cuckoo Bay. Uh, Cuckoo Bay. Cool and different. It's like a psychedelic dream pop. Um, and there's. That's the best. I think so. Eric Estrada has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I have spoken. Yeah, agreed. So, Is this how we end up? Side now, like Star Trek. Beat me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> Beat me up, Scotty.